All right, so I'm gonna show you what it takes to make the cage that the candle goes into. I used a three inch candle because I thought it fit good. So I found some three inch schedule 40. Now schedule 40 just means the thickness of the pipe. Rather than find a ring like these that the candle goes into, it's a lot easier just to find a piece of pipe, put it in your saw and go ahead and cut a little ring, okay? So this is the top ring. And then for the actual base with a solid plate on the bottom, you just go ahead and cut off a thicker piece, weld on a plate down on the bottom and grind it. So this looks all nice and smooth, but that's what it looks like before you grind it. So you know that this goes down in here and then this will go over the top like so. And then for the actual rings or the, the spikes that come up, I took some half by quarter inch steel put them in my forge and just bent a little hook on it just to give it that decorative little look. So there's actually a whole lot of little pieces that go in this. So then you put that on there. Make sure you find it and you quarter it up because it won't look right if you don't. Uh, and I chose an inch and a half between the two. So I put a piece of inch and a half pipe or square tubing on it and then welded all my pieces and ground it up and there you go. All right, now a real easy trick to figure out how something gets exactly quartered, because if it's off by just a little bit, your eye will notice it. You take the OD, which is the, the diameter of that ring, divide it by two and do a crosshair on the corner of a table. So since my ring is three inches or three and a half inches, plus my quarter inch on both sides is gonna make it four. I go ahead and draw out on the table put a mark at four, put another mark at four, take a square, square it up there, square it up here, and then divide that by two, comes up with two, do the same thing for two and two, overlap your line, you put down your ring just like this, now you know that, that is gonna line up with this, which is gonna line up with this, and then that again, so it's real simple, real easy. Now, if you wanted to do it by like six different ones, then you have to go to math class because I'm an artist, not a mathematician. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these on, which is a slight weld right on my mark. Now I'm just lightly tacking them in case they lean off to the side a little bit. I can smack them over and line them up so they look good with the eye. This is kind of a medieval design, so I'm not too concerned about it looking like it's been machined. All right, so I tacked it down. This needs to be tapped over a little bit, so I'm gonna go through and fine tune everything, make sure they look good. Now my clamp is gonna get in the way, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna tack this actual cage to my table. That's why it's nice to have metal tables, so, and then I'll cut it off and do it later. Just two little tacks. And I can take this off. And then now, this allows me to go through and make sure everything looks good. Everything looks pretty solid. So now, I'll go ahead and finish weld everything, and then I'll drop it in. By it, I don't know. Okay, I've got my inch and a half. I just happen to use a lot of aluminum. I do a lot of aluminum projects and the metal slag does not stick to aluminum, which is nice. So this is inch and a half. I'll go ahead and drop it down like so. I'll take my second ring and I'll drop it down in there. This happens to fit nice and tight and then just kind of overlook through the top to see if it lines up. So I'm eyeballing straight down it 
These two look to be the best. This looks like it can be pushed in a little bit, so I'm gonna weld these two first and then I'll pull these wherever it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this in. Allows nice tight fit. So these two are done. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one here. Just make sure it didn't move on me. It looked like it moved a little bit. All right, that one looks good. Okay. So now you have your cage. Let me get, to get the candle to make sure it fits down in there. This candle's seen better days. And we're good. Well, I've got it welded down on the table. We all know when you weld, the heat will make your metal move. I'm gonna go ahead and weld all of these joints here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my vise and I'm gonna grind my weld smooth so it doesn't look like, I don't know, bubble gum is what the welders say. So I'll grind those smooth and then I'll show you a trick on how to make your welds look old. All right, so I ground down all my welds. See how nice and new that looks? I mean, that'd be all right if that's what we were going for. But we're going for this old world look, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is stick my entire cage into the forge just enough to get red hot for that old metal or that new metal to get scaled up. So, and then we'll worry about the rivets later. Okay, it's hot as I want it to be. Now what I'll do real quickly is I'll quickly quench it in some water to make it scale up a little bit more, but I won't totally cool it off and harden it. You see some of that scale slowly starting to develop. Now when I quench it, it's got a little bit more scale. See some of the bubbles that formed underneath there? And that's all I'm gonna do. I don't wanna harden this thing because I still wanna be able to bend it around so it'll slowly heat itself back up. So then now I'm gonna put it somewhere. It's always good to have a place in your shop where you have hot metal stored so you know it's hot and you can tell people it's hot. Mine's underneath this table next to a five gallon gasoline bucket.